Hey everybody, it's Lane with Crafty Life Mom. Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be sharing with you some spring and Easter DIYs and they all kind of happen to be in the same theme. So at my local church, I am part of a ladies event where we're hosting a grand tea um, like on a Saturday where I have been asked to decorate a couple of tables there. In addition to that, I am hosting Easter at my house House, and I thought it would be fun to share with you guys some of the DIYs that I have planned in order to make these two events kind of extra special. Now, because I am doing the two events and they are very close to one another, I thought that I would be able to use these things more than once, as well as home decor in my home. So there is a theme that you're gonna see throughout the entire video, and I am going to be sharing with you, I think around five or six crafts today, maybe more. So. I am going to go ahead and get started, but first, if you like to see crafts and DIYs, home decor and organizational tips, please hit that red subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be notified every single time I upload a video. All right, guys, so for today's video, what I wanna do is a certain theme that is going to be part of some tablescapes and some decor items in my home. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but there is, or what I'm starting to see trending on Instagram is this blue floral china pattern. Um, sometimes you'll see the word chinaseer. I'm not even sure if I'm saying that right or like ginger jars. And to kind of be a little bit more specific, um, that is the theme that I'm going to be going with and I'm gonna be pairing it with my favorite color, which is pink. So just to kind of give you an example, this is what I'm talking about. These um, jars right here, these were um, a purchase that I got on Amazon. They are a little smaller than I thought they were gonna be, but nonetheless, they are cute. And I'm going to be pairing them with a larger centerpiece, centerpiece, can't say that right, um, on the tables that I am hosting. And if you look at my craft table in the back there, you can actually see a large vase that has a similar pattern. So all of today's crafts and DIYs are going to be related to this blue floral china type pattern. Um, I do have some crafts I've already started. So here is a wooden bunny that I made using a scrapbook paper um, to decorate this bunny and I did it on the front and the back so no matter which way you're looking at it you can see that blue floral pattern. I am going to just give you a little bit of a um, overview of the crafts and then I'm gonna flip my camera around and we'll get started. So I have another wooden bunny that I wanna do and I was going through my craft stash. Um, here's the pattern that I have for the bunny. And then here is a pattern very similar, it's a scrap piece that I had um, in my crafting stash. So as you can see, there's like several different variations of these floral patterns and I thought that it would be neat to kind of build a collection or curate a collection on the tables that I'm going to be doing for the event and for Easter um, at my home. Adding in some bunnies that have the Easter vibe along with this Chinese pattern or this floral pattern um, with some of my favorite colors, a hot pink. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip the camera around and then get started with the DIYs that I have planned for today. Okay, so my first project is to basically make a second bunny. So at the event that I am a part of, I'm actually doing two tables and I thought, you know, like one would be good for um, one table, on, you know, one on each table. So I already made the first one and then I was at, and I just happened to have this in my stash. And then I was at the Dollar Tree and in their Crafters Square, um, they have several different bunny um, cutouts this year. So I picked up this one and thought it would be a good one to kind of do similar. Um, one thing is though, I don't wanna do the whole bunny in blue on this side. I may go back and actually do the blue on the back here, but what I wanna do is kind of work with um, this gel stain to kind of create a stained wood 
look on the bunny and then put a pop of that china blue pattern um, on the ears and maybe even the cotton tail. So I'm just getting out a foam brush from my stash here and I'm just going to like kind of dry brush this if I can. Let's see, I don't know if this is gonna turn out kind of how I want it. I don't want it to be super dark and I don't know, yeah, this is gonna soak up really well. So it's kind of one of those situations where it's a little bit of trial and error. Now for the ears, I'm gonna use this scrap piece from when I cut out the bunny and I'm just gonna use kind of like, you know, when you would color leaves in on paper in elementary school, I'm kind of doing that to kind of make the shape of the ear there. I'm just gonna cut that off. There's the first one. And then I'm gonna do the second one right here. Same kind of thing. I'm just gonna make sure I have it creased all the way. Kind of use my nail there to cut it. Cut that shape out. And I'm gonna do the other one. Mod Podge is like some of my favorite crafts to do because it just livens up a piece so well. All right, and then I think for the bunny cottontail, I think I'm gonna paint it white. I don't think, like I just don't feel like a, I don't know, what do you guys think, a cottontail? China pattern. I just don't think that that looks right. So I'm not gonna do that. I think I'm just gonna paint it white. Now, one of my favorite things to do, though, when I do Mod Podge is take like a sanding sponge block or whatever this thing is. I got this from Dollar Tree and I just kinda, like wherever I put the paper edge, I just try to sand it kind of hard on these raised pieces, but I feel like it just finishes the, the paper just so nice. So, um, like that. All right. So before I flip this over and paint it, what I want to do is, um, I think cover the back with a bunny paper or with a China pattern paper similar to the one on the front. And I have a whole other sheet here. So
So I think I'm going to have to trace it and then piece it together. So let me grab a pen. I'm going to do just the same process here. I'm just going to line it up and then trace. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, like I said, I'm just going to cut it out. So, okay. And then I'll use a scrap for the part that's missing. So put my pen down and just cut this out. And then I'm doing, the reason I'm doing both sides is because I've done these before with different wood pieces where I don't do the back at all because I'm like, oh, you won't see it. But on a tablescape, like especially a round table, people are going to see the back. So in that reason, I'm going to do the extra step of covering the back just because it's, I just feel like it's a whole nicer appeal or look, you know, that it adds like a more high end look to the whole table setting. Um, of course, if I was like putting this on a sign or displaying it somewhere else, then yeah, I would not do the back. But in this case, since I already did the back on the other one, and I'm not sure that you're not gonna see it, I'd rather just go ahead and do the extra step and take care of it. All right, so now that that's cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue this on the back and then add my next piece. Okay, so I went ahead and went and finished the back. It's not perfect where it lines up, but from a distance, like even at a table arm's length away, it's not gonna be a big deal. Um, and then I have this ribbon and this pink and white buffalo like check. And I made a quick little bow and I'm just going to attach it, I think like right there, just a little hot glue to hold it in place. And then there you go. I think the pink just adds a fun little twist on that blue floral pattern. It's just kind of unexpected. Um, I'm gonna trim that one down just a little bit. Let's see here. And let's just do a better angle on that one. All right, so here you go. A little bit of, that's still drying the white. But there's a look at it from one angle and then the other side. And I just think that these will be super cute um, on my tablescapes. So that's it for this project. I'm going to go ahead and move into my next project. And then at the end, I will show you guys a mock-up of what I expect the table set up or tablescape to be because I'm actually filming this video a week and a half before the first event and then you know it will be up before then but I might go back and add a photo in the comments. Okay so for this next DIY I thought it would be cute to make a couple of little plants or planters or I'm not really sure exactly, but using um, mostly items from the Dollar Tree. So what I have here is these little wooden boxes from the Dollar Tree. They make like really cute pin cups. You could even use it as a pin cup. 
um, it's what it actually says is a wood pin holder, but I'm going to actually turn them into like little um, plants for decoration, or you could also use these for like home decor in your home somewhere. So I found this branch or what is eucalyptus from it's Walmart. It's actually leftover. It didn't really cost me anything. Um, and it has, I think like seven different branches on it. So what I was going to do was kind of split this one into two. And then at the Dollar Tree, I found these decorative wood tiles that kind of are that mosaic pattern with that blue and white kind of vibe going on. I just thought it would complement with the florals really well. I did get two of them. I'm not sure this is going to be enough to cover the entire box. I'm hoping it is like one per box, so we will see how that goes. Um, so to get started, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just cut off these eucalyptus branches into separate pieces so that I have them ready once I'm ready to put my plant together. So I'm just using these wire cutters. You can pick them up at any hardware store. I actually got this pair a very long time ago, um, like years and years ago from Lowe's, Oop, I had a fly away, and get rid of that. All right, so I'm not really sure the best way to go about this. I'm gonna peel it back just to kind of see where it begins. Let's see, I'm not even sure like the quality. It says removable tile stick. So it's pretty sticky. Um, it's almost even perforated a little bit on this thing. But if I measure with my pen, I think I can just cut it and then measure it to fit. So let's see if that works. So you can kind of see there, I have like a half an inch gap on the tile. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it all the way across. And then I'm going to measure vertical, let's see. There's one. And I'm going to need four sides. So I think one peel and stick will actually work for one container. So we'll see. All right, so I'm gonna cut there. And I'm gonna cut there. Okay, and then I'm just gonna peel and just kind of line this up on. I want it to be flush at the top more than anything because um, how cute is that? See, that's gonna look super cute. Okay, so it was off a little bit on my measurement, so I'm just gonna trim that off there. And then let's see if I can line it up. I'm not sure if it's gonna look good. Oh. You can kind of see like. How it went there. And again, I'm gonna cut that little extra off. I just thought this was a cute little idea that I had while I was in the Dollar Tree. And there's a little extra tiny, tiny bit of a lip right there. 
So I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just going to keep measuring. My little box here. I just thought how fun would this be to have sitting on the table kind of paired with those smaller jars, except this one has a plant in it. Okay, and then let's peel that one. Oh no, that one was a little short. So I guess I'm just terrible at measuring today. Let's see if I can use one of these little lips that I cut off. Just kind of piece that together. There you go. It's not perfect, but it's it's definitely a whole look, isn't it? Hmm. Probably gonna be the same measurement on this one. Yep, I was right. I'm not sure, maybe it's the wooden box that's not lined up. I don't know. All right, so there's that first one. Super cute, I'm thinking like sitting on a table with just a little bit of greenery in it. Okay, so I have some pieces left over. I don't really know of a project that I could do with that, um, but this is definitely a cute, super quick DIY for some table decor. I'm gonna just save these little pieces in case I need some extra on my next one, but I'm gonna move on to the next part. Like I'm gonna leave the top wooden because I kind of feel like it's it looks like tiles glued to, or you know, like, put on the wood. So I think it's a cute little look. And then I took a block that I had. This is just leftover from the Dollar Tree. I sliced it down the middle um, because it was a little too big for my box. And then this is my trick is I'm just going to kind of shove it on an angle down into the box like this. You see how that works? And it just kind of trims it down in there for me, nice and snug. I'm just gonna add my bigger, chunkier pieces down into the bottom that ripped off, like so. And it's not even gonna go all the way in there. And then I said I had like seven of these little branches, I think it was. So I'm just gonna take like three or four of them and kind of just place them into this styrofoam and create like a little plant arrangement. like so. And then give it a little push down in there. It's kind of this cute little boxwood eucalyptus miniature little table plant like that. How fun and cute. I think it looks perfect just the way it is. You could definitely add some moss down in there if you didn't want to see the styrofoam, but I think for just a cute little table centerpiece added little thing. This is super adorable, easy to do, and it only costs me like $3 if that. Okay, so here's my next DIY. I wanted to make a couple of um, Easter eggs that had the blue china pattern on them. So I was, at the Dollar General, I think that's where I got these from. That might be Big Lots. I'm not sure. I think that's Dollar General. And these are just um, kids' eggs that you can color. And um, I think they came with like a little coloring book. I'm not even sure. But what my plan is, is to actually take these eggs and Mod Podge them. into blue china eggs 
using these napkins. Now, I was able to purchase these from Amazon, and they're just a cocktail napkin. And for my table setting, what I plan to do is um, wrap an egg within a napkin to kind of make it part of um, the whole like napkin ring, that napkin place setting. So these I think are two ply or three ply maybe napkins. And I'm going to try and see if I can separate this. Yeah, at least one of the plies away. Yep, there we go, like so. And then what I'm going to do is kind of just wrap little squares all around each little egg. So I'm just gonna cut this up into little pieces. They don't have to be perfect because like I said, I'm gonna Mod Podge it onto the egg. And the egg is really not a, um, it's like, it's not an easy shape to kind of cover or Mod Podge, it's, you know, an egg shape. So I'm, it's gonna be interesting how this actually works. I think I'm gonna actually have to do this into like little tiny squares and then overlap um, the napkin. So I'm just gonna cut like a bunch of little pieces. And I'm gonna try and cut off the, the trim. Well, I guess I don't need it to, I don't know. We'll see how it works. Cause I, I want it to be like aesthetically pleasing, but I want it to look like they were professionally made that way. If that makes any sense. So I'm trying not to keep any of the patterned pieces that have that little Greek edge on it. Cause I just don't know, I don't know. I'm gonna hold that one to the side. I just don't know if it's gonna look right. Um, like that one may be okay if I overlap it a little bit, but some of these that have it on the bottom, I'm not quite sure if that's gonna look right. So just doing some little strips in squares just to kind of make some pieces here. And this one actually looks like it could be almost done into two. So um, yeah, that's the plan. Let's see how that works. Okay, I'm gonna throw that one to the side. All right, and then I'm just gonna use my Mod Podge brush, um, like my little paintbrush here and then kind of give these a little makeover. So, let me sit down for this. And let's get to work. So I'm just gonna paint the Mod Podge. around the egg and then just take a piece of my napkin Okay guys, so here is a look at my finished eggs. I did do two dozen of them, I'm not gonna lie. 
This took some time. It was very messy to do the Mod Podge on them. They are still drying. You can see where I still have some bumpy edges. I only need a few of the, well, I need about 16 of these, not 24. So I will probably pick out my best ones to use and I will show you guys how I plan to actually use these um, once I get done with the rest of my projects. But all in all, like I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. I definitely tried different methods like running the strips of paper horizontally and then like doing like four vertically and then like one top and one bottom. Um, both of those ways seem to work pretty well. If the pieces were a little too big, like if they wrapped all the way around, it just wasn't gonna work out. So um, definitely shorter little strips um, and you could either run them horizontally or vertically and then put one on the top and then another one on the bottom and then gave it a nice good coat. So this one is almost dry. Um, it's a little bit of the carton here that's kind of stuck to it, but overall it looks pretty good, um, I think, for decoupage eggs. So you guys can definitely leave a comment down below. I will um, put a link to the napkins and um, where you can find some soft paper eggs like this down in the description box below. Okay guys, so for this next project, what I'm going to do is basically I'm just going to show you um, what I'm making and how I am making it because it is also another project that is going to take a little bit of time because I'm making 16 of these. That's how many place settings I'm actually creating some of these things for. So it is taking me some time to make all 16 of them. And instead of just putting them all on camera, I thought it would be better just to kind of show you the materials that I'm using for this and the stages of it. So I had wanted to really get some cute napkin rings and in my head I had this vision to have like bunny ear napkin rings that also had that blue china pattern with them. And I searched all over Amazon, all over Google to look for them and I only found one place. And if I, um, find the place I will put a link down to the original ones but they were some kind of crazy expensive I want to say they were probably $30 for a set of four and the ones that I am making are very similar to those that I found and they are only maybe fractions like a dollar maybe two at the most Per napkin ring which is still really good especially if you're into hosting or having table settings that are in the more formal um, range of decor um, this is definitely a way to go to have a little bit of DIY um, into it so it's kind of got that class um, but it's also unique and gives it that little extra punch so I wasn't quite sure how I was going to do it but I was at Joanne's uh, Fabrics Craft Store and I came across two packs of this burlap paper. Um, it came with eight sheets in it, which I thought was um, pretty perfect because I thought I could definitely um, use these for the bunny ears that I wanted to put on my napkin rings. The back of it has like this like nice paper and it's kind of actually a little bit thicker than burlap fabric but on the top it is true burlap fabric so i went into cricut design space and i kind of played around with some different shapes and kind of made a design that would be the ears and this is what i kind of came up with it kind of looks like one of those things where you've seen people like make a bow um and you could definitely use this as a bow. But some of the files that I found, I just, I didn't want to mess with the file. I just wanted this piece and this piece only. And so I just made my own. And if you want to get the um, actual SVG for this file, I will put a link to where you can get it down below. I will um, create that so that you can use it in your silhouette or in your Cricut. And then I cut out some teardrop shapes. I just did the teardrop shape and I matched it to be 
on the inside. So you can kind of see where I'm going with this. So using my hot glue gun, I'm going to basically glue the wrong sides together to create my bunny ear like this. And then two of these will be on my napkin ring, kind of being the bunny of um, the little ring holder, the napkin holder. So to make the napkin rings that these will actually attach to, I've done this before and I'll link the video down there um, where I took some shower curtain um, rings from the Dollar Tree. You actually get a pack of 12 of these for $1.25. And when you open these up, um, they're just clear plastic. And like, I don't know. I know so many people use these for crafts other than doing them for shower curtains. But so basically what happens here is they kind of like snap and that's how you, you know, open them or put them on your rod. So I went ahead and snapped them all shut like so. And I took two of them. Right, and then I put a bead of hot glue to create the two to be able to put together like this. And now my napkin ring is going to be thick, like it's gonna be wide. You could certainly do the skinny one, but I felt like for such a substantial bunny ear, it needed to be extra like wide, double thick, I guess. So that's the whole reason for having the two, right? But once you have them glued together, it kind of looks like this. See, so you can kind of see how I have that. And then you can do two ways that you can cover this. So what I did a year ago and just recently tried it again with this project is I took jute twine, also from the Dollar Tree, and I'll show you a pack of that. Um, you can get a pack of it for a dollar. 25 and you get three rolls of it one roll um, should probably get you I'm going to say four napkin rings just to be safe you might be able to get five or six out of one roll so you definitely like you know one pack will get you good if you're making a set of six or even a set of eight um, but then you'll take the there's a fly in here you'll take the napkin ring um, this base I'm going to get that fly <laughs> And I would tie on the jute twine and then start wrapping it through, right? And it's this is where the time consuming part is, is just wrapping all of these rings, putting a little bit of hot glue every so often to kind of keep it secured. Once you have that done, it kind of looks like this, which is not bad, right? Looks pretty good. Um, they, this jute twine, it does have some burr like some stray like fuzz or whatever on it. Um, I just, I don't know what to tell you. You can like take your scissors and like cut that off. Some people have done like a lighter to kind of light it, but I just don't recommend doing that. That's like a fire hazard. So definitely don't do that. Just kind of give it a haircut with your scissors to kind of get some of those burrs down. You could even take like a little bit of um, spray adhesive and like kind of put it, you know, but again, that's a lot of work and that's adding to the task of, of getting all of these like this wrapped to look like this, okay? So um, again, you could look for that burlap paper or you could even do like a burlap ribbon and wrap the ring in a ribbon and then like snip it every so often and then hot glue that in, which is the, the way that I'm going to try it next using the burlap paper. Like I'm thinking I could cut a strip of this off and then wrap it around the ring and see how that works for me. Um, just because wrapping all of that twine around all the napkin rings, it's a task. I did it um, back in 2020, I think, when everybody was in lockdown, I had the time, right? And I only made six. So to do another 15 of these, well, I've got two. Um, this is the second one I've wrapped. So to do another 14, I'm just, I'm thinking a fabric is another way to go. So once you have that, you have this all hot glued down, you can then secure these um, ears. You can do it to the back of the napkin ring. You can do them to the front. Personally, I like the back of the ring. 
like this. And then I even have some burlap wire that um, I got from the Dollar Tree. Which, um, it's okay. Okay, guys, I'm not going to say it's like the best thing. You can see like when you cut it, it starts to unravel and the wire is exposed. So this product is good when it's packaged and you see it in the store. But I think as far as like using it to do anything, like I don't really know. I thought it would be good to kind of make into an ear shape and then frame my ear, right? Like this. But you can see here, the more you work with it, the more it wants to unravel. And so I'm just not feeling that. Again, that looks like more work. So I'm trying to go for the best look here without all of the work. And like the more I touch it, look, my entire wire is exposed. So I like this to maybe secure the ears on, but I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like my hot glue gun is gonna be the, the front runner here. So the whole way through. All right, so now you kind of get the idea of like how I'm making these napkin rings. I have 14 more to go. Um, so wish me luck. I'm gonna keep working on them. Um, I already have several of these like pre stuck together in groups of two. And once I get that all set and done, this is the look that I'm going to go for, just to kind of give you an idea. So I have these plates that I'm using, right, as part of the, um, the place setting that I'm doing for the two events. And I liked it because it had this scroll pattern on it. And I don't know if you can really see that look, this one I've been playing with it, so some of it's starting to rub off, but it's plastic, it's disposable, and they come in packs of 20. I think I got 60 of them for such a good deal, and I don't have to do the dishes, right? When we do these events, sometimes we bring in our china or women bring in ceramic plates, and I have sorts of things like that to kind of build up around it, but for the plate that they're actually putting their food on and that is you know, going to be touched and used by a lot of people, I kind of just want to toss. So I'm kind of going with this china look or this upscale disposable plate, and it's going to be sitting on a charger and a placemat in the entire table setting, which again, I will show you at the end of the video. But here is the look of what I'm going to do for the napkin and the napkin ring and the egg. So all together, and I'm kind of bending these ears back. You can see I've made one all together. This is the look that I'm going for on the plates and using these napkin rings. So what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. Do you think that this is cute? Would you do something like this? Or do you think like maybe I got it all wrong and you think it looks bad? I don't know. I know this blue china pattern, if it's not your flavor, like you just don't like it. But that's why I tried to like bring in the pop of pink with it to kind of dress it up and give it that springtime kind of flair. So what do we think? I absolutely love this. I think that the jute twine wrapping could be a little bit better. This is the first one that I've done, and I did put one of those eggs in there that we just made so that you could kind of see the look here that I was going for. I, I do love it. I actually do really like this look. Um, I just think that the wire, the jute twine, definitely needs a different kind of uh, solution there. So I will get to work on that and show you guys what I come up with at the end after I make them all. Okay guys, so here is the napkin rings completely done. I did 16 of these. I actually um, stopped my video and I did some of them last night and finished them up this morning. Um, they are not perfect by any means, but they are super adorable. I love the way that these turned out. Here's again the like place setting situation that I am thinking of doing. This is um, a cloth napkin. Those are the eggs in the project I just did before with the napkin ring. And so I just feel like the pink totally complements the 
navy or the blue and white um and just to kind of go over like this really quick because i figured you know now's a better time than never um these plates are like the plastic disposable plates like i mentioned this is actually cardstock scrapbook paper i cut on the cricut and then this is a placemat you could totally do just the plate or you could stack plates but because this is a large event i'm hosting two tables out of like a possible 250 people so i'm doing two um it's a fundraising event and all the ladies are asked to well the ladies that are a part of the hosting of the event were asked to do some tables. So in order to like save a little bit of money, instead of, ha or even if you don't have it, instead of doing like a charger and a placemat and then a dinner plate, when they're all gonna be um, just eating off of like one um, smaller like dinner plate or a larger like salad plate, these are a nine inch plate, if you're wondering, just for reference, you don't have to have all those plates and confuse people like which one they're supposed to use, especially if they don't really know. Um, but to kind of keep it looking more of a formal kind of affair, using a round placemat, or you can even do square and scrapbook paper cardstock, it's very inexpensive. And using a disposable plate kind of helps build those layers. But if something gets damaged or there's food on it, it's not a big expense or it's not a big cost um, to you. And then a cloth napkin always dresses it up. You can just collect those, throw them in the wash, and it's really easy to reuse those and you're not washing all those dishes. So just something to keep in mind if you're ever like wanting to host an event for family or like through your church like we are or you know, just a fancier affair um, that gives it the extra something. This is a way to do it more cost effective or on a budget. So I just thought I'd share that. And then of course I finished the 16 um, t uh, napkin rings that I made for this upcoming event. And like I said, I'm gonna kind of repurpose this for my family for Easter. I'm going to do a similar table setting um, for like, especially for like all the adults and then I'll do something a little easier for the kids. But um, just a fun way to kind of, you know, have both or work two things into one. So um, yeah, and then, you know, if any of the ladies in my family, once we're done using these, if they want a set of them, I'm, you know, they were very inexpensive, so it's something easy to give um, away to them. So what do you guys think about this project? Um, leave a comment down below and let me know and I'll move into our next DIY. Okay, friends, so here is my next project. Um, these are called cloches, I believe. Cloche, cloche, cloche. I don't know. Anyway, they make great um, home decor items. Um, you can also pair them up with like a couple of different vases or little things and kind of make like a collection in the centerpiece of a table, which is how I plan to use them. So this larger one is the one that I was planning to do for one of the tables just to kind of have because I didn't have a lot of those um, blue floral pattern jars and I thought this would kind of pair nicely with um, one of the tables like one has this egg shaped one I will show you um, that jar where I was going to pair this with a um, vase right and remember I'm doing two tables so I only have one of these I found this at a yard sale believe it or not and so I thought this could go on the other table, right? And just kind of include something in there. Well, while I was filming the last craft, um, I got a phone call from one of the ladies who is helping us with the event or who's in charge of it. And she said that she might need um, some more tables because we are selling more tickets to this event, which is a good thing in one sense, but also a problem because now we need to make more tables. And I already told you, like I'm already doing a, this whole theme for two and you know, it's a lot of work. Like I could easily just buy the things or just kind of mix and match some of the things that I have, but I like to make it special and I like to, um, 
you know, make it kind of unique and make it my own. It's just something I really enjoy. So when she called, I said, well, I'm already doing, you know, the two tables. I don't really have enough to do the same theme for another table or two even, but I could probably, like I just said, throw together a mix and match springtime theme um, for, you know, any additional tables that we may need to fill or put centerpieces and things on it. And another girl said that she had like the dishware, the china, she just didn't have like centerpieces or the fun stuff. So she and I are kind of working together on a second set of tables to basically create um, another centerpiece or another theme to a table. So in crafting my stash, I found two more of these cloches. I knew I had purchased these from the Dollar Tree. And um, I believe, just you have to check your local Dollar Tree, you can find these. Now, these are a lot smaller than the Target Dollar Spot one. This one was a $5 one. Um, but I do actually have these two that, that match little bunny kind of ears. Um, little tiered tray but it's a one level also from the dollar spot and i thought like paired with like a little plant or a little flower this and maybe one little thing they would make a nice little centerpiece so that's what i'm gonna do i was just gonna make the one but because i knew i had two of these and now the, the situation of more people buying tickets i'm gonna be able to create um you know, two, two little extra ones. So to get started, and the other thing too I was going to explain was these um, little wooden risers. These, you can make these um, pretty much with any kind of wooden supplies that you have. Hobby Lobby has these, even the Dollar Tree has these like little wooden plaques. And then you just get like big wooden beads or balls. You can purchase those from Hobby Lobby. Even the Dollar Tree, you could get those like wooden Jenga blocks or those little cube blocks and stack them in such a way to make these little risers to kind of create different level situations on your table. So these were two that I had probably from the Dollar Tree. I don't even know um, these wood plaques. I've even seen like wood plaques like this at Michael's, like in their little checkout stand. Like sometimes they have like a little bin of things and like they have wood plaques in there for like 99 cents. Um, and then I have these like little, I don't know what you call it, like candlestick holder things. I have had these for years and I've used them for different projects, hence the glue that is on the bottom of them. And so I just, um, I had them in my craft stash I pulled them out and just kind of repurposed them into being the legs on this riser. I was going to stain these, but being how like this is the natural wood and the natural wood, I think I'm going to leave these the natural wood too. It really kind of ties into that springtime theme. And so, um, you know, something like this can sit on the table and give it a little extra height, or you could put a vase on it, you know, whatever you want to do. Right, so I just wanted to share this with you. This is a cool little thing to add to your tables or even like in a hutch, you know, when you're displaying different things or like different coffee cups or different mugs or whatever. Um, give These give a little extra height and see like you can tell, like these are not even the same height either. So you could almost pair these even together in a home decor kind of look. So I just wanted to share that with you um, because it is something you know, that you can do to create the extra look or whatever. All right, so I have the two that I'm gonna make and these I'm gonna kind of just make the same. And then this one is the one I was planning to use opposite of the other table with the theme that I have going on. I pulled out some of this like boxwood um, wire, whatever uh, plant like kind of thing. Thought that might be cute and useful. And then my craft stash I had some of this reindeer moss and this other brownish floral moss. It is kind of messy. I don't know why that is in there. Um, but anyway, I plan to like kind of use this to fill in these little plants. I got these little clay pots, how they're, they're golden white. I got them like this as a gift 
from an event that I went to. I think it had some seeds in it to plant some kind of plant or maybe even it had a succulent. I'm not even sure. But um, anyway, I had two of them. I've had them just sitting in my little coffee bar hutch and haven't done anything with them, haven't put anything in them. Um, and when I thought of these cloches, I ran and grabbed them because now I have a purpose for them. Okay, and then I have these wooden discs. So these I have used to make like ornaments with um, names on them or phrases and sayings. I actually have a project on my blog where I got a file and I stencil painted um, these discs and we even turned it into a craft kit. So I had a bunch of these left over. The smaller size one, um, I believe this came from the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree sells all kinds of wood shapes and wood things now, especially in their crafters section. I went into one the other day and let me tell you, normally it's like a corner of an aisle, right? And we've seen it expand to like one aisle long and this Dollar Tree had two aisles worth of Crafter Square products. I had never seen so much um, in one Dollar Tree before. So that's definitely a good one of a gem. And when you find a Dollar Tree like that, you need to check it frequently or as frequently as you can because the things in there, you know, they're so good. So anyway, I believe I had these from a Dollar Tree. It even looks like this one's been used. I don't know. I pulled it out of my craft stash. And so what I thought these would be good for is the inside base of the cloche because I'm going to be gluing like hot glue, gluing down moss onto the base to kind of create like a grassy area. And I don't really want to glue it down to the inside of this cloche because I want to be able to change out like what is in here, right? We want to keep like, I've seen these around the Christmas time. People do cute little figurines in there. You, you know, for spring, you could even do like a fairy looking garden in there to kind of bring that fairy garden inside. Um, you could put these on a tear tray and then change what is actually inside with every season. So I kind of want to do that. Um, since this is the first time that I'm actually doing a craft with these, I think I'm going to keep that changeable thing going. And so I pulled these out. I don't know if it fits quite in there. Oh, it's so close. Um, so maybe I'll be able to like, you know what? I have an idea. I could probably cut it down just a little bit on the sides to get it to fit. And then that way these are like your base. And if it just fits down in there, which let's see if it will close with it. Cause it's kind of like, you see how it like does it? It's just at the lip. So if I just set it in there, let's see if I can put the, yeah, I can't. So, oh, that's such a shame. But that was my idea anyway. I might have a few smaller ones, but you can kind of see, you know, like how that idea could totally go. And then you pull this out, you know, with the little scene all glued down on it change it out with your season. So I'm gonna work on that and see if I can't get that cut down. Um, let's try this one and see if the bigger circle will actually fit in here. I think it will. And this is so nice for the five bucks it was. Um, yeah, so this one is definitely, see that? Not gonna be a problem. So that's my little scene and then boop, this will go right on top and now you can put this like on your countertop with a tear tray, whatever. You know, how cute and adorable is that? It does look like it was a slide around. So I guess the solution for that would maybe be like a little Velcro or something where you put Velcro on the bottom of your bases and then as you put your seam down, it just kind of Velcros into place. So that's what we're working with. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put that to the side and build on this. And then for the Dollar Tree ones, I'm going to just kind of figure out what I can do to create that, um, that base as well. Like either cut these down or I'm not really sure, but let's see what I can come up with. 
Okay, so I just took my scissors. I don't know if that's going to ruin them or not, but I think, I don't know. I buy scissors all the time, so I'm not worried about it. I just kind of cut the, um, you can kind of see there, I kind of cut like an edge here and then a little bit here and then there, and now it actually fits in there. So just to kind of show you what I cut to get it to work just a little bit and a little bit. Used my scissors to just kinda get, like I did a straight edge first, like that. And then I just trimmed into the circle a little tiny bit, not a whole lot, like just enough to keep that shape kind of. It's definitely not perfect, but um, I didn't have any smaller ones and I figured this was a lot easier than, you know, and, and then like you can get your finger kind of in there to lift it out, especially if you have something going on up here building up. So let's go ahead and start creating some bases. So I know for the smaller ones, I'm going to try and keep them the same for the larger one. I kind of want to put a pot here. Um, maybe even in the center. And then I also have from the Dollar Tree, these little moss bunnies. They are so cute. Definitely feel like they need to be in this little cloche somehow. So let's see, I definitely like these ones. So I think I'm gonna be able to get away with just doing those and those. So for, the baby, the baby ones, right? I'm gonna call them the baby ones. I'm gonna make a little mound and I have this cone in my stash of styrofoam. So I'm just going to kind of cut it down a little bit. Oh, it's gonna make a mess. And I need three pieces. So let's just, I'm gonna make that my little cup and I'm gonna move these bunnies out of the way. And hopefully like this is done kind of quickly, but um, I'm gonna do one more a little cut on this. Oh, and then what I'm going to do is just kind of put a little glue on this side of it. And glue this little piece down into one of these cups. I think I'm only gonna use one styrofoam cup or one of these little clay pots just to kind of, you know, keep it simple. I think sometimes less is more. I also had these in my craft stash. I've used these for several different things. These are um, little skewers. You can get them out at Dollar Tree at the in the springtime or even like into the summertime. They sell them like in the barbecue section. Um, what's cool about these is you can also cut these down, right? And I'm just going to do it like that. And then these little bunnies, they kind of have a hole in them already. So I'm going to stick it into my bunny. I'm going to put a little hot glue here. And then I'm going to stick it down into the styrofoam in there and just to make sure that this is going to fit inside my cloche I'm gonna just test it really quick make sure it's not too tall oh yeah perfect look at that super cute right so that's what we want to do that's the thing we're the vibe we're going for all right so then the next thing is like, I'm trying to decide, do I want this perfectly centered on the disc or do I kind of want to create like a little scene so there's kind of like a front side to it and then the back is just the simpleness of the bunny. Does that make sense? Like, I kind of want to, I think I kind of want to do it towards the back. So, I am going to, well, first off, what I really want to do here is get some of this moss, which I told you guys, this is kind of messy, but what I'm gonna do is put a little bit of glue down in here 
and just fill it up with that moss. Like so. And now I have like this little miniature topiary thing happening um, with this little pot. How adorable, this is so stinking cute. I love this already, just like with a little bit of stuff in my stash. And when, the funny thing is, is like when I bought all of this, oh no, it's like melting the styrofoam. <laughs> that would be my luck, okay. Let's see, how can I get that to stay? It has literally like carved out, look at that. <laughs> it ate that styrofoam, do you see that? It's like all the way, it's like disintegrated. So that was no good. Um, I'm gonna have to put some more of this in there. And note to self, don't hot glue it. <laughs> Cause it will melt your styrofoam, so. Let's see, let me get that out. Um, if at first you don't succeed, right? All right. Let me push that down in there now. Okay, and now we're gonna stick our bunny back in there so he's nice and straight and solid. And then this time, I'm just gonna do I'm afraid to do a lot. So I'm just gonna do a few little dots and just get my moss back kind of in place, really. Just kind of sitting in there. I'm gonna hold it down. It would probably be better to be using floral foam like for building centerpieces or building flower arrangements, but I just didn't have any and I just wanted to create something that was using materials from my stash. So that's what I'm working with. Okay, so I, this is a little bit better. It's not perfect, but it's way better than the styrofoam melting. And now I have this cute little bunny miniature topiary. All right, so back to what we're gonna do on here. I said it would be cute kind of sitting back a little bit, but I feel like we need a green, like little grassy area for this to kind of be chilling in, like so, kind of like that. I'm guessing, I don't know. I'm gonna spread this apart a little bit. Like we kind of want it to be mossy garden. Does that make sense? So, but I'm gonna leave this little area so I can set my, um, clay pot there. So I'm just gonna do like this on the thing and then re-put my mossy grass on into place. Let me get the styrofoam out of there because we don't want that to show. So. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is put my clay pot on here and position it so that it looks good just chilling in the garden, right? So I think that this one is pretty much done. I do have um, in my kitchen, which is so funny because like when I decorated for Easter, I had these little styrofoam speckled eggs that I just kind of like tossed into the center arrangement and I had way too many. So I'm gonna go grab a couple of those and just kind of place them in here, kind of like an Easter egg hunt. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I went and grabbed these little styrofoam eggs. They almost look like the candy ones that you can buy and eat, but they are styrofoam and I think I think I got these at the Dollar Tree, like right when they were putting Easter stuff out. I was in there for Valentine's Day and that's how early these were put out. I don't think they've been out there lately. Being a Dollar Tree shopper, um, I'm not really sure. But remember, I'm gonna use this one on my big table. So what I think I'm gonna do is just keep it to the blue and the white since that's the theme I'm going with there over there and just kind of put a little dot of glue 
on these to kind of hold them into place, but hopefully not make them melt and shrink. <laughs> All right, so there is my first one. I think that that is super adorable. If I'm looking at it from behind though, I do notice like I could probably use a little extra moss back there. So I'm gonna just pull out like a little strand of it and just kind of hot glue it down into place here like that. All right. Oh, hot, I need to put my finger protectors on. So now if you're looking at it from behind, I feel like you're not just seeing it like as the back, you can kind of, you get a little seam too. I'm just gonna secure that egg down. And what do we think? Should I throw another egg up here with this topiary? So like from the back, I'm not sure. I'm thinking yes though, cause I kinda am digging it like that. Just a little something. Peeking. Okay. All right, so there it is. How adorable is that? Okay, and now, like I said, I can just take my little scene put it down in the cloche, right? And then let me get this stuff out of the way. Ta-da, super adorable. I feel like, oh, can you guys see it without I'm trying to do it without it like falling? How cute is that? I love the way that that came out. So simple, so easy and inexpensive too at the same time. All right, so this one is done. I'm gonna go ahead and do the next two and I'll be back to show you guys. Okay, so I thought I would go ahead and just film this part and show you what I was thinking. I took those little styrofoam pieces and I just hot glued them down to the center to kind of create a little mound, if you will, to, um, I don't know, like basically create a little height and dimension. And then my thought was I would put the bunnies on a little short skewer again and kind of create the same look with the pot but without the pot. So, let's see um, if I can do that. I'm gonna stick this into my bunny. Oh, I don't want it to poke through and that's what I just did. These are so cute. And I'll do the other one. Like so, okay. So, and then I'm gonna try my best to just cover this area with the moss. Um, kind of just using up this bag of it, I think, you know? and create like a little grassy moss area. Sometimes you get these long little pieces that just kind of hang off into there and mm, not quite my favorite. All right, and then because I know that the hot glue kind of um, melts on the styrofoam, I'm gonna try and be super careful with putting stuff on it, the hot glue, because it just like eats it right through. And I don't want it to do that. I really want this to be a cute little mound pile here. So see how it's eating it? It's like uh, suctioning down, which is okay. Like if I lose a little bit of height on the styrofoam, but I want it to still be there. You know what I mean? Like, it can just be a problem. This glue gun just gets really hot, so maybe a low temp one is best if you're gonna recreate this project. 
or maybe like a spray adhesive. I've used this before and my hot glue. That hot glue gun, actually, I did a project with bunnies there. Now that little stick is like in the way. Ah, so many strings. All right, and then let's see. I'm going to, let me do the smaller one into this one because the mound is higher. Same kind of situation, just built it up. And then I'm just gonna try and get some more moss tacked down. Our little bunny guy here. Okay, so for this project, which is kind of my last one, except for the um, floral vase, I wanted to make a mug. Um, I'm actually gonna make a couple of these because some of the ladies that are coming to our event and even to my home for Easter, um, they um, are gonna be gifted one of these mugs. So I'm gonna make about four of these um, for those ladies um, and the design that I am using for this design, um, mug is um, kind of what is the whole inspiration to the theme or the table theme, um, I guess you could say. So I printed off a bunch of them, that vase with some pink flowers. And looking at the print, it just looks like, um, a little red I guess or a little bit of a light pink so I'm kind of hoping um, once it's sublimated that these will be a little brighter so we will see how that's gonna look but what I'm doing right now is I'm just gonna cut my little images out and I printed this off of the um, uh, using the sublimation printer and I got this design off of Etsy, which I will link those things down below if you're interested in crafting with sublimation. I have another video um, where I set up my sublimation printer, and so I have been getting into sublimation products, projects, whatever you wanna call it, and I'm just real excited to um, see how this design is going to turn out. All right, so here is my mug. I'm going to do the same thing on the front and the back. So it doesn't really matter where, um, which way I start with, but I am going to, um, first just try and get any lint off this mug using a lint roller because I want it to be super clean um and then i'm just gonna oh i'm gonna use my shirt because i saw like a smudge there you see that i don't know if you can see it in the camera the light like really picks it up so i just know like if you have any lint or anything like that on your cup or your mug whatever it is you're sub sublimating it does make like little blue specks or dirt looking things. So I definitely don't want to do that. All right, and then I have this, um, this tape, which is heat resistant tape. It's for sublimating projects and keeps your item in place. Okay, so I want it to be like, right there. So 
sorry if my head is in the way. Okay. Just don't want it to move anywhere, so I'm gonna tape it down pretty good. And while I'm doing this, I'm gonna turn on my Cricut Mug Press. I got this just after Christmas and I am loving it so far. So I just wanna make sure it is secured into place. And then I'm going to put the other one on the other side. Trying not to touch my design because I don't want to mess with like the ink. Okay. This tape is like kind of thick. That doesn't seem real tight, so I want to make sure I am super smooth here. Okay. And then what you want to do is put your butcher paper, a piece of butcher paper on your mug just to keep it from any kind of burn off or anything like that. You don't want it to burn in your press and you definitely don't want it um, like messing up your design. So it's kind of a must, must do. And, oh, I measured that pretty good. Okay. Now, I've done this one other time. I've made a couple mugs where the whole design was around the mug and I forgot to put the butcher paper around it and it turned out okay, but I don't think I would do it again. Like, I don't recommend not doing the butcher paper. So, okay, just make sure it is like super secure. We don't want it going anywhere. I'm just going to do another piece. Maybe like right up here. Just kind of keep that in place. Okay. So I think we're pretty good. Now, once the Cricut is ready to go, like once it's heated up, it will beep and it, I believe the light will turn green. This is just like one of my favorite new little gadgets. So I'm just excited to do another project with it. While that's heating up, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a couple more of these. I made a, a, a like a bunch of them just because I like the design so much, and if it comes out anything close to what I'm hoping it will, then I plan to make like maybe a few more, one for myself. We'll see. Okay, so that sound means it is ready to go. So I'm gonna just move these out of the way. And I'm going to just slip my mug. And you know what? Like, before I start, like, I can feel a heat coming off of there. So, I bought these mittens just to kind of keep my hand from getting 
burnt while I put that in. So once you get that in, I'm gonna turn it all the way. Wait, I wanna turn it to the side because the little door here, it's going to shut on it once I close it all the way down. Okay, so hopefully it does its magic. I'm so excited for that. Okay, so while that's going, I'm just going to cut, like I said, um, off these images a little bit to make a couple more mugs. And I'm just cutting closer to the design just so I don't have like that paper boxy look in case it happens to burn like that. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so it's almost ready. When it gets to like the fifth light here, it's starting to blink. And like you can kind of see the butcher paper in there. It's kind of got that tan brown look. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but you can see where it's like brown and yellow really. All right, so that sound means it is done. So we're gonna open it up. And I'm going to carefully, oh, and I need to get my cooling pad out. I'm gonna let it cool right here. Okay, so it's cooled down. I have another one going, and it's still a little warm to the touch, but it's not like too hot for me to peel. I say that, but then I'm trying hard not to touch it. So, getting my paper out of the way. Still a little hot like on the sides here. And it's been cooling a good while, but because it's ceramic. Alright, there we go. Moment of truth. All right. Oh, second mug is done. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's a little crooked, but not too bad. Super cute. Okay, so I'm gonna put that down for a second and let's just get this one out. It's like my little mug shop here. Ooh, that one has a lot of burn on it. You see that? And then I have another one ready to go. So I'm gonna put it down in there. Okay. And Look at that. This one's like equally crooked. So I hope I lined up the other ones, but I love it. What do you guys think? The flower, like the printing the, of the colors, it's kind of more red than I wanted, but I mean, I just love that design and how cute of a gift this is going to be. Um, it needs to be a little straight, but hopefully like the ladies like it and it goes with our entire tablescape so I'm thinking that they will love having something like this to take home with them like as a little thank you favor what do you guys think leave a comment down below and let me know if you like the mug and I will link it the design that I have purchased this from to get this design um, as well in the description Okay, 
So here is a look at all of the projects we created. Um, I just love the way everything came out. It definitely took me, um, you know, about two half days to do everything, but I think it's a super cute little theme. There's a little riser. Um, I absolutely love the way these little planters turned out. And then of course we have the napkin rings. I have 16 of those. And then the cloches, they, they look so good. I think they will be so fun displayed there. Of course, the eggs, this was a time consuming project, but they turned out so good. A few of them have like a little bit of where the paper carton kind of like stuck to it, but they're gonna be wrapped in a napkin. And for a paper egg that was so inexpensive, I just, I think I only used like four napkins to do all of those eggs, which is really good, I think. And then of course the vases, I think that this turned out pretty cute. Um, and I think it will pair nicely with the others. And then of course, our mugs. I love the way they turned out. I will show you guys a um, picture of the floral arrangement. I decided not to make that on camera because it was just, it's too tall and the angle that I had to get close up. I've done them before and it's um, just something I decided not to um, do on camera, but I will definitely put a picture at the end of this video. So I, uh, if you got it this far along and you um, watched everything. I hope you um, enjoyed it all. Maybe you'll make some of these crafts and thanks for sticking around. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye now.